Um, it just seems like an interesting... Why would they go and give everybody a break like this? Like, the yeah, game ended true. a while ago. Yeah, that's true. I think production needed a break. Because lower division was done by RS and then, alright? And this upper division game is done by the the crew. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But uh, whatever. What what do you think about this draft? If you ask me, I'm completely favoring uh, Fnatic here. Uh, sim I'm not biased. Mm -hmm. Uh, simply because I think they have a much synergized lineup. They have a lot of team fight and boom esports. They have no team fight at all. They have they have close to zero team fight, but they have good catch on the Batrider, Slada, and Nyx. But I think it's gonna be hard to completely win out the game utilizing catch because mm -hmm. Fnatic is a is a disciplined team. They are not gonna they are gonna, not gonna give you too much space for you to catch people and snowball the game over. So overall, I think I like Fnatic's chances more in this game. Yeah, I think it's uh, it seems to be pretty, like, standard, I would say. There's nothing too crazy. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of, like, you still got the arena, you got Split Earth, you got different ways to do this, and just, like, the hook shot, everything kind of combos in. So I see where they're trying to go with that, as opposed to uh, Boom Esports, which is also not the worst thing in the world. I mean, Nyx is still pretty, very strong. Um, Slaughter is, of course, uh, and Batrider, which we see quite a lot of. Seems like it's gonna be a Mikoto bear at the mid versus Slash Rack. Um, should be a pretty 50 50 lane mm -hmm. unless one side tries to over aggress over aggro and then create an opportunity. opportunity. Otherwise, I think it's gonna be a trade farm. This bottom lane is where we want to lay our eyes on though. Slada versus Juggernaut. I think this is gonna have a lot of killing potential, especially with um with the help of Clockwork plus Nyx. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of action here in bottom lane. By the way, how do I actually tone your voice down? Apparently, you're very loud to me. How do I do this? I'm like such a noob with like Discord. Um, can you right click me and then try to tune my voice down? No, we're not in a channel or anything. I'm because this is like one of those direct message things. Yeah. Oh yeah. Close DM. No, that's not it. Did I just? Oops. I think I just canceled the call. <laughs> awesome. All right, hang on, let's try this again. All right, no, I actually just can't. Let's go off. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you manage to tune me down a little bit? No, hang on, give me a second. Oh, mic up? No. How do I turn you down? Can we join a channel? Is that possible? Yeah, it is possible. All right, hang on. Okay, um, join my channel then. Oh. Yeah, just send me the link. Oh, you invite you? I invited you. All right, this is awkward because I should have joined your ch channel a long time ago. All right, I'm going to go in. Uh, Toto. All right, hey. Oh? Yeah. Ah, here we go. All right. Yeah, is it better? Yeah, that's way better. Nice. Okay. 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 All right, sorry about the inconvenience there. Okay. Laney face. Uh, what do you think about this Jugs clock versus Nyx slaughter lane? Four melee duking out with <laughs> each other. I think it's going to slightly favor to... Whichever side that has more regen. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a lane that you know Slada is trying to make is trying to force Juggernaut to buy as much regen as he as he can, further to slow down his um economic growth. So I think that's gonna be the, the target of Slada here. So if Juggernaut doesn't spam regen, he's gonna keep hitting him, keep harassing him until he, he has a killing opportunity. Mm -hmm. But seems like Raven is getting quite a good lane though. Looking at looking at CS, 13 last hits already. Because yeah. DJ is always positioning positioning himself in front of Juggernaut to make sure that he's the one harassing out the slaughter yeah, and, and not also, the otherwise. And there's like no cut creep, like creep cutting. You know what I mean? He's not able to pull it away. So Raven's kind of had that free farm. And so DJ just really been on point in terms of like being a perfect support. Um, you know, something that I aspire to do myself in the sense that I'm like a terrible support. <laughs> I thought you played post 4, so... Well, I do, I do. But when I play position 5, people are like, oh, does this guy even play Dota, right? It's that level, <laughs> right? So that's kind of why I think position 4 is more my style, but sometimes you're stuck playing the 5, right? Yeah, that's true. Sometimes you just don't get what you want. It's live, I guess. Oh, top lane, though! First blood, Maseras. With the, you know, the spear, it's just God's rebuke. It just does a surprising amount of burst damage. Yeah, this is marks in a nutshell in this patch. The ba basically the the one off lane that does the most damage out of all. Mm -hmm. It just it's crazy how cheap uh, Ghost Rebuke is and how much damage it does. Yeah. And so P PL versus PL versus Mars. I think we have seen this yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, in Omega's 
uh, or a few days be before this, uh, Omega versus Hoyo, I think it was the same thing. And Mars was able to harass PL out on lane by a lot. So this top lane is going to be completely favorite for Mars, I think. Yeah, I really didn't have much of a chance, but we've seen so much Mars in almost every one of our series. I think he's like, the pick rate is insane. Yeah. Nope. This hero just does a lot. It offers a lot um, strategically to a team. Um, for example, you want initiation, he has it. You want you want defense, cloud defense, he has it as well. So this, this hero is just, you know, a hero that got free to everything, kind of like a puck in yeah. one sense, but uh, a stronger puck, I would say, when it comes to when it comes to damage oh, department. Mm -hmm. So what do you, what should they have done when you see like a Mars? Is there something that you look to counter pick with? Is there something like, how do you play? Like, does your play style change? Like, what do you look to do? I think first of all, you definitely want to take, take away his lane dominance. So you probably want to pick something like an Ursa, Monkey King, so that you can at least um, not give Mars the lane he wants, like right now. So I'm actually really surprised Boom Esports that went with the PL pick instead of the Mon in instead of the Monkey King pick because Monkey was still in the pool. So yeah, oh. and then they picked PL into the Mars too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think they were looking like PL has ways to get out of the arena, if anything. He's got that ticket, so to speak, with his doppelgang and he has options. But I mean, just overall, like why the PL? That, as I say, that Cascade Q is getting a little bit low. He gets speared back. He should be fine, though. But at level 3, he's just going to be backed away, and he's not going to get the room. Jabs will pick that one up. Oh, he has the bottle from Masaras as well. This is such, so effi so efficient. He picks up bottle from Masaras so that he can go for the... He can go for the... To collect the bounty, and in the, in the same time, he also... The oh. bash, he's got him queued up with the crush as well. Oh, another one! He had them both up, and uh, oh, he gets the sell from DJ. DJ is like the best support. Yeah, this is what DJ has to do because we stay, we talk about this the the regen the trade on the regen, mm -hmm. and Slada will always be the one on advantage because of how you know like the bash is just so cheap and does so much damage. Mm -hmm. So it really like DJ is really sacrificing his own game. Ooh, crush! They found DJ. He's gonna have to fairy fire. And he's been locked in. FBZ is sprinting after him. Another bash and a fairy fire just to go for it. But the assault battery actually pushes him away as well as the cogs saving his life. And Raven is just trying to get something out of this. But they glyph here. FBZ is going to actually use the salve. So he should be fine. But DJ playing a little too close to the vest in that sense. And he TPs away and he's fine now. Oh, Spear here. They found Drew. And it looks like he does need to be careful. He's got God's Rebuke. I don't think he has the mana. He's trying to get the charge from the bottle just to get a little bit more mana. But they found the hide. And so they're going to get something out of this. And Raven, that's all by himself, by the way. Yeah, so Solo Q, I think he found a chance to to commit a big fury onto the Nyx. And also Raven, I believe he has the, the boost. Yeah, he has the boost too. So I guess he just ran down on hide. But yeah, look at Masaros. Like, he's just doing so much now. He's top on the net worth right now and compared to the PL, PL is 600 go behind. Wow. I actually did not expect Oh here comes Ooh, they found Masaraz, they got the lasso and he should be stuck in the spear is gonna completely whiff. When you panic, you panic and sometimes you throw <laughs> those things. Uh FBC though is getting uh slowed down by the assault and battery, but he should be fine. He's gonna walk out of that sp uh, the spin from Raven. He should be good to go. But they did get a nice pick off with Masaraz there. Yeah, very good rotation coming up from Mikoto. It was an arcane, it was an arcane rune rotation as well. So, so the ultimate from Berade is gonna come up very soon. And Masara is just tipping down back. He has Moon here though. Perhaps they are looking for a fight here, or maybe Moon is just nearby so that he can get his brother refilled. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good efficiency there by Fnatic. There's quite a lot. I mean, there's two bottles on the team. They definitely need to kind of work out how they're going to pick up runes and everything. But Moon is looking to hunt down Drew, who is level 6, though. And uh, a little bit of funky camera work there. I think it would... S it's like maybe like a scary movie in that sense of like, oh, PL's going to die, and they look away. <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> I FBZ, though. I, I, want to, I, want to see, I want to see Moon making a rotation to the bottom side to, to, to kind of threaten FBZ's game. From me lane. Oh, DJ trying to be a little cute just to kind of protect the rune. Oh, Phoenix is diving in. Jabs is going to kind of scare them away. And Mikoto is going to respect that. He's going to back off. But Jabs is only level 4. At level at 8 minutes, that seems uh, a little, you know, worrying at this point. Seeing as the position 4. 
Yeah, he's gonna have to take the tome. It really depends on Jabs though, because if Jabs is in need of the tome, then he has he will have to take the tome. Mm -hmm. So it will make Clover games very very hard as he will need to find a lane for him to recover. And as he does so, he's at mid right now. And good thing is, Lashrak is a hero that can go AFK jungle to leave the mid lane open to his support. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, Mikoto is farming more efficient than Lashrak for sure because of these ancient stacks. Yeah, very good job by the supports from Boom. It's actually insane just how easy it is because you get to what? I think nine sticky napalms and then you start attacking at, you know, when the tent hits um, and you just kind of just blow them all down. Look at this. Look at he, just how much damage he's going to do. He's actually going to pull the other ones. He's going to take next to no damage here and uh, he's going to take this entire stack and just kind of collect all those neutral items as well. And so just really nicely played by Boom and they should skyrocket in terms of the net worth. Oh, definitely. That's like what? 600 go injection? right after the two camps. So this is immediately his boost of travel done. And this is a really good timing too because he went to the ancient at somewhere around 1.4k go in his back. And after this, immediately he'll have the boost of travel. And the good thing is Fnatic has no information of this at all. So the next rotation, or the next barrier of rotation is going to be really huge coming out from Boom. And they have to make use of this to take down some towers because looking, looking at tower damage is not good at all. Aggressive TP coming out from Mikoto. Oh, that's the BOT reveal. They do have the net from the uh, the little troll. They found jabs though, but he's only level four, and unfortunately he's gonna die. But Moon is gonna look to just turn this around. They've got the arena. They turned it into a trap, and they got Makota is stuck into the arena. They've got him, and they're looking for more with FBZ on the prowl. In the sense, he does get the crush. He's been stuck in the cogs and should have a hard time. He got something. He got his Amazon delivery, so he got that before he dies. But that's at the 10 minute rune, and they do end up securing that. So, not the worst thing for Boom here. And Raven TP spins out. That was a really good, sp uh, there was a really good punishment coming out from Masaras as well. Well lit time with the Arena plus Spear. That was a really good, uh, good kill too. Uh, that was the, that was the boost of travel review coming out from Brian. And they instantly get a kill on him. Well, you are sacrificing your jet, your, your phoenix for it, but who cares? Moon, and they do have jabs with a burn. It's gonna burn through. He gets a phoenix dive in the egg. Very, very deep. Hide was cannot get anywhere out, but he's stuck by himself. They've got uh, Moon down, DJ down, and jabs is in a bad spot. He's gonna try to keep himself no, no. alive with the phoenix dive, but he gets stuck in the st sticky napalm, just slowing him down with a crush, and that should be a dead bird there. That's his second life, but he goes down. It's a three for one. What a great fight for Boom Esports. Yeah, this is what they have to do whenever whenever last track is grouping up to to push towers and you see and you see Mars is not there and, and if you know that Arena is not there you should always look for these punishment kills. So that was really really big for for Boom. So very good um, sequence of event here coming from both sides actually. And this buy a lot of time for PL to farm the ancients. You have to make sure that Boom have to make sure that they always defend their mid tower so that they, they don't let they don't give up the control of Triangle to Fnatic. Mm -hmm. And that's completely changed this game around. I mean, their top three cores from Fnatic were winning at the 10 minute mark. We've just turned it almost to the 12 minute mark. And look at this. The top two are now from Boomy Sports with Drew and uh, Makoto just farming like crazy and just getting those kills. Uh, the BOTs is really paying off for Makoto right now. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Also, Lashrak is going into a very awkward situation now because normally Lashrak will want to play aggressive. Oh, the oh, hook shot. Makoto? They found Makoto, but DJ is a little bit low. The arena, the cons as well. They found Makoto. He has no way out, and they're going to end up killing him. So a nice pick off there. DJ playing super dangerous, but he does end up securing that kill for them. And instantly, Fnatic, they're grouping up a mid lane because they know that they need to make use of this opportunity and window to take down the mid tower. And that's why they five man for this. And when Boom Esports, they definitely want to defend, but seeing Fnatic bring five men, ah, that's going to be a tough defense. And they will let this go. So smart decision coming out from Fnatic. Good movement coming out from Raven too. This is something that you want to do on a carry sometimes. You want to just position yourself to your teammates and commit for the tower. Because normally if you bring five men, the enemy has only four in this case, they would, they would just give it up. So you mean you uh, do sometimes, as in Raven, like your carry, your position one, actually helping in a team fight before the 20 minute mark? Wow, this is like news to me because I've never seen it in my pubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why sometimes I'm a little you bitter. have to I'm play sorry. carry yourself. <laughs> That's why you have to play carry yourself sometimes. <laughs> Just control it myself. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I should. I should. And and to be honest, that's probably where I need to just just take over games, right? I think that um, 
but like I don't know like I, I feel like I've got old man reflexes and just not the same as what I, I once was when I was a, a young Padawan of sorts <laughs> all right I, th I, I'm, I still I still think that yeah if you really want to go for you know like if you are really aiming for MMR oh wait Ooh, oh, that's spared. something you wouldn't want to do for MMR yeah. Yeah. all right so what is it what is this uh, the true secret of gaining MMR yeah I, I think you just have to play car you just have to really? play play car okay you know it doesn't matter if you play if you play carry like a god uh play support like a god if your carry doesn't know how to end the game you wouldn't get your MMR anyway so yeah. I thought you were gonna. I, I I completely saw the setup, and I thought you were gonna go a completely different direction. I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, if you want to raise your MMR, you just need to sign up for my coaching and my boosting services that I have at leonarthurdota.com. Wow, <laughs> I mean, I definitely have to learn a lot from this. <laughs> uh, you gotta sell yourself, man. You gotta sell it. Yeah, right? yeah. I have to. I have to. Yes, 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 yes. My bad, my bad. Today I learned. Not only I learned Dota, I learned some 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 skills to sell myself too. All right, Sometimes you have to be a salesman. Yeah, yeah. So you help me with Dota, and I will help you with the selling and everything else. How's that? Wow, that sounds really good. It sounds like a good trade. It sounds like a good trade. <laughs> oh, Jabs, though. Does this sound good for the Jabs? Whatever that's happening oh, here. Oh, the Blink. They're trying to find him. Here come the TPs. They're instant. And he gets the Phoenix dive, but he does go down instantly. The arena is getting all three stuck in, and the more TPs are coming. Makoto as well. Makoto's looking to just fight this. The Omni Slash is just right on focused onto Makoto. Ravian secures that kill. Drew's going to get a double kill to kind of start things one off. They get the Yules up on PL. Moon, they get the nice little split Earth, and they spear Drew back. He's not going anywhere. Maseras will secure that kill. And they want hide. Can they find the cockroach? They're looking for him. He's trying to TP away. And I don't think there's a spear ready and available. So it's three for yeah, one. But, yeah, three for one. Uh, three for two, actually, because Jeps, um, he died earlier and he bought back instantly. But nevertheless, it's a very good defense coming out from Fnatic. They were positioning the, the they were positioning Jeps very defensively to bait him. Oh, Ooh, that being said. I don't know if you saw that, but it was actually he blinked past jabs because he wanted to crush onto the creep. So he's actually split pushing while he's trying to go for the gank on jabs here. Maximum efficiency. <laughs> oh, it seems like, all right, jabs knows that he's going to die because he he doesn't have TP there and he was close to pace. So he had to commit the supernova there. A little bit unfortunate for jabs, but as long as you are, st as long as stay alive, I guess that's okay. You know, I'm wondering though. Oh, I mean, huge it's... stack coming up from Fnatic for Raven. Oh my gosh, it's gonna, yeah, his, his net worth will skyrocket there. But like, I mean, it's a level one egg. Could could Slaughter have maybe solo killed that? Uh, does he have the power shred? Yes, he does. Maybe, yeah, I think maybe he'll have a chance. Okay. Because I don't see him getting hit by the, the fire spirit. Right. But I guess he's also afraid of the the, in, the potential TP incoming from Fnatic, so he doesn't want to risk that. Okay. His life is always more, much more worthwhile than than pos position for life. So, but like even if the egg went off, right? I think that like I don't think that Jabs really could have solo killed him, like in return. Obviously, if you know teammates come in and everything, then he needs to be careful. But they found Jabs now, no egg, the Sun Ray. They've got him lassoed. He's gonna be locked back in. He's gonna pull him into the creep wave. And he just burns there. Wicked barbecue. Insane amount of damage the Barrett does right now at this stage. There was only what two sticking and palm, and he yeah, he already he could he could already take down the Phoenix from hundred to zero. So Barrett is definitely one of the strongest mid hero right now. And speaking of the entire how how the entire entire game is going is that Juggernaut is pretty comfortable right now with the Battle Fury. He doesn't mind slowing down the game. Arena all committed just for Hyde, who's been scouted out by that Sentry. But they're gonna let. Okay, I thought they were gonna give it to Raven, but Mazaras will take that pick off. He deserved it, you know. He 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 hit the spear. He deserved it. <laughs> Juggernaut is going for the S and Y next. Um, pretty good item against the Flame Lasso and also all the all the small stuns coming up from Boomy Sports. So once the SNY is up, Jagona is going to be really, really strong when it comes to team fight. And the, and the bottom tower defense is just a glimpse of how strong Fnatic's team fight can be. And uh, one thing to note is that Drew has actually picked up, you know, a Diffusal Blade. He's got a Hood of Defiance. He's going to be going Manta next. Are you okay with this build order? Yeah, I guess it's okay. The, the thing is, he, 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 has, he has to go for Diffusal Blade because their team... The fall of his teammates is not not so strong in, in terms of fighting and damage output. 
So like PL has the has the urge of urgency for him to get into fight as as early as possible. That's why the diffuser played first. And then a month after that, that's just nature now. It's just that I, I don't see him using the Diffuser Blade too much anyway. Yeah. So is that really worth having Diffuser Blade first? Well, I mean, it's going to mm. affect Clock and Mars. Uh, those guys aren't, don't have the highest of mana pools. Um, so it does have some value. But I, I, I'm again, it comes back to that last game we casted with Omega. And they went they went Diffusal first and they didn't go Battle Fury or anything like that. Like a farmy type of item. Like a Yasha to kind of start things off. All the Blink Crush. They found Raven. And they've got him lasso back. DJ's trying to hook in, he's trying to save him, and then they're trying to protect his protect uh, his president, that is, and Raven gets the Omni Slash doing so much work with that Battle Fury. They've turned this around. They thought him they, they had a trap on this guy, but it was completely for waste. They completely threw that fight. Raven getting a what was it, 2k on that one, and they got four kills to, for that fight. Instantly trending turning these the Russian fight. That's a super great fight coming out from Fnatic. And also that was really fast reaction coming out from Raven too. He he managed to pop off his uh, Blade Fury right before the Flaming also came in. So there wasn't any any burst damage on Raven that, that killed him. That was just uh, like, just, that was insane, just how much damage it did. And the fact that like, it didn't go on any of the creeps, like the Omni Slash just went straight on the heroes. Like, um, is this guy hacking? Should we be doing an Overwatch on this guy? Or is he just really <laughs> lucky? I think he's just really lucky. I think I think that's uh, that's actually a small trick that you can do when you are omni slashing someone. You can just like spam clicking one guy, and there's higher chance the the omni slash will bounce to the to the one guy. Really? Okay. I, I mean, this is like the uh, like what what they say, you know, <laughs> the the rumor that is in the in in the in the in the market. But honestly, is that an effect? No one knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, okay. I wonder if that's like a, if it's like an urban legend or if that's actual like you know proven by data I would say because you know sometimes when I'm just clicking on guys I, I know for a fact that like you know as a support you're making to do one you know one attack or so not like an omni slash in that sense so it's gonna be very different uh, but in this case uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have to give it a test run in the demo after yeah we have to do that it's like it's like the urban legend. It's like the thing that you know. Whenever people play console game and they play fighting game, they just like when they want to win, they just hit the buttons really hard, as if it does more damage, right? By doing so, <laughs> just mashing buttons. You got it. <laughs> oh my God! Jabs from downtown. FBZ. They found him. Ooh. Hyde is trying to keep him alive. He's getting so low, and it looks like they're gonna back off here. Makoto is here as well. The hook shot does connect him onto two, and he got him in the cog. What a nice play by DJ. They found him, and it's a two for nothing so far. And it looks like Makoto's gonna fly away, flap his will wings, and try to get to his the rest of his teammates but what a nice hook shot by dj this is the this is the this is the advantage of having a post four player turning into a five because he remains all the really high personal skill mm -hmm. and when you place him on a hero like clockwork that can make such plays he is gonna bring plays for you so uh, and this is why clockwork has always been my favorite position five um hero because it's just how how much of an impact he can he can do in a team fight without any any resources on him is he... What do you think in terms of position fives? Like, top three right now. I mean, you don't have to rank them or anything, but, like, who do you just really like as a position five? I mean, Clock is definitely on that list, right? Yeah, Clock is definitely one. I think I like Elder Titan a lot, too. And basically, they are heroes that doesn't need resources to do a ton of damage or impact in the team fight. So Elder Titan, Clock Red, Undying is pretty nice, too. And it, it depends on what kind of um, post five you want to. If you are talking about team fight, then definitely the three that I mentioned above. If you are talking about um, lane domination, definitely Leech, Grimstroke, CM, heroes like that would give you a lot of lane domination. Okay, okay. So uh, for all the viewers at home, this is how you get your free MMR with position five. Just pick the ugly heroes, apparently. Yeah, the toxic hero. The heroes that will make your enemy feel disgusting <laughs> and annoy them. Ooh, oh, sticky napal pushes him back. He uses it to the arena defensively, but What's DJ it? goes back in. He's got the nice hook into the sun ray, and they've turned oh. it into a trap, and they've completely turned this around. Drew's running for his life. Makoto as well. They've got the sticky napal just slowing him down, giving them some sort of chance as they run away. Raven, or sorry, Moon is not even in the fight. He's not even close, and he's been pushing the mid lane here. But what a disaster there by Boomy Sports. Yeah, I think that there need to be a there need to be a tweak on Boomy Sword mindset right now because five on five shouldn't be something that they are looking for. They should be utilizing their power in terms of catching with the Slada plus um, Batrider and then try to punish the split pushing Moon. 
Because as you can see, Munch is always far away from his team because this is what he wants to do. You have those of travel, you want to play far away from your team to increase, to maximize the efficiency. So Moon is actually a really big fish for Boomy Spot to punish right now. I guess they have to they have to really stop running into a Fnatic's five man. Ooh, they found Makoto, they've got him speared with the sun rays, just trying to just stay alive, but he's unfortunately not even able to move or cast any spells. He goes down very quickly there. Mazaras is on a killing streak. And it looks like Raven's gonna go for high ground right now. Ooh, the bash, they do have it. So uh, here's the, the, the skyrocket that we talked about. Fnatic made like what? Like it was very close. There was a chance where Boomy Sports had taken it around. On the arena, they've got the spear with FBZ and the spin to win. And Raven's, or Moon is gonna secure that one. Drew is now back into the picture here. They do have buyback if they want this, but it looks like they're not gonna fully commit as they back off here. And it looks like they're gonna give up the top set of racks. Yeah, Masaras is just using the bulwark to, to be the protection for his team. And Raven with the shot upgrade, his, his blade free does a ton of damage there. I'm looking forward to see, I'm curious what talent would Raven go for at level 20 since they get the, I think since they get the shot, he wants to go for the Blade Fury DPS that talent. Then he would not only have the Omni Stash that does a lot of damage, but Blade Fury would do a ton of damage too in team fights. So it just further amplifies the strength of their team fight right now on Fnatic side. Yeah, they're just so far ahead right now. I think like Raven, he, the world is his oyster in the sense that he can pretty much go anything at this point, and I think he's gonna pull out the victory in this one because they are definitely in the driver's seat. 13k up. What does Boom need to do to get back in this game? Well, you still have the PL that can potentially stand up and carry the team for him, but. PL needs a ton more, a ton of item to, for him to do that because not only he has to survive against the against the juggernaut, he also have to itemize for the last track as well. So he probably needs items like um, the, the Skadi or the Heart of Terra so that his illusions can survive the last track. Pulse Nova. So there's a lot of items that Drew have to get right now for him to carry this game on his own. As as we can see, he's going for Heart of Terra next. Yeah, I mean, like I understand why he got the hood. But, I mean, Drew, it seems like there's a lot of pressure put on this guy's shoulders. He's got, he really needs to just kind of carry this team. And it, it, like, is this a draft issue? Like, what really happened here? Mm, seems like a draft issue here. Because Boomy Spot, if you look at the early game, they did pretty well with the boost of travel reveal, the early bad rider and stellar rotation. Those are pretty nice, but they don't have the tower push to, to turn into something objectively important for them for their team so they are like okay we kill you here we kill you there but it doesn't really matter for for them and boom and frantic is like once we hit our timing in terms of team fight we are just we are just five men running down on boom and there's nothing boom can do against us because of the draft advantage that that the frantic is having like i'm looking more and more at boom's lineup and i i, I understand the synergies like the sticky napalm cross of haze nix for the potential just ganks you know and just that vision that that provides but oh he actually misses the split earth the arena is on point and they found fbz stuck in god's rebuke will end up securing that kill and mazaras is unstoppable at this point and i don't know how you stop fanatic at this point i mean they just have to stop taking fights i guess like the entire game we are looking at boom they are always reacting to the to the move of fanatic which you know even even if they respond to that they, they don't have anything to fight against them they don't have anything to fight back so what they need is really they have to outfight fanatic with with items you have to get the bkbs the pipe anything like that that can help you salvage the lack of team fight in your team yeah and, and for I Slada, he hasn't been farming too much on Slada. He has just been always trying to get a blink stun and setting up cues for his team. Mm -hmm. It means that once his dagger is up, he's basically stagnant for the entire duration after the dagger. And if you look, look at Masaros, he's already gotten his BKB. So in terms of hero to hero counter, like Fnatic is outmatching uh, Bumi in all aspects now. Oh, that was a uh, very late BKB, and that was that was seemed very odd there as Mazaros just pops the BKB as he misses his spear. <laughs> so uh, I think he's just making sure that his uh, BKB worked there. <laughs> Trying out the the BKB from from delivery. Well, that being said, Fnatic is still in control of this game. They can control the second rush out after that. Second shot should be up anytime soon. And FBZ is just, just getting stagnant right now. Like 
entire boom they are getting too stagnant because they have they haven't been amplifying at pushing lanes. Yeah. Kai is gonna die to Moon Solo as well, Ooh, or maybe not. Or yeah, jabs actually Phoenix dives into it and does a little bit of style. He like a uh, 360 uh, just skateboarded on top of the guy. Oh, once game boom is trying to fight into Fnatic. Oh, they've got the lasso. They found DJ. Can they actually get the pick off? The crush is going to be committed as well. They've got DJ. He goes down. He does not have buyback jabs. He's actually going to try to fly to the high ground. Drew is there. He's doing a little bit of work, and now the egg is going to be committed. Do they actually have enough? They're not actually focused on this one. They've got the arena. They found hide again. He, that's a dieback for him, and they're looking to turn this around. They've got splitter of the sun ray onto Drew. The four staff is going to keep him alive just for now, but the Omni slash not enough, and you cannot get away from Raven here. Keskyu is just running for his life. He's using his little, uh, you know, he's hopping back. Bambi's trying to just stay alive, maybe go back to mommy. But unfortunately, not able to do that. They go under tier two, and that should just sway them from going in. But it looks like they're just going to back off and maybe take Roche. What's the call here? Oh, they definitely want to just chill, enjoy their victory for a while, and wait for Roche to come out. I just want to say how crazy Juggernaut is against PL in this patch. Like, you can go for the Battle Fury or Maelstrom build. And most importantly, not only... That too, at Fury slash Mesh is going to be good on PL. Oh, the hook shot. They found Makoto. Nice little cogs right there, pushing him back. DJ on point with his clock, making sure every initiation counts. Split Earth is going to be a little off the mark because of the four snap, but they do kill Kez Cute as well. Kez Cute is more looking more like Kez dead. <laughs> Kez is cute, but dead. <laughs> oh, they found Drew. Look at how much Big Fury damage, dude. Yeah. Like, he just spins. Like, the Battle Fury just does so much work. Drew really can't do anything. I mean, with two heroes down, really not much you can do. And they're going to just take Roshan for free here. Yeah, I feel like Blade Fury right now is becoming the ultimate for Juggernaut. Because you can go for the Blade Fury talent plus the shard. Mm -hmm. it, makes the, it makes the skill so much more stronger than before. And now you can actually utilize the split, uh, Blade Fury to do damage. Before that, Blade Fury is, you know, when it comes to mid game to late game, is only a way for you to get out of team fight. But not now, like, it's not the same anymore. He does so much damage now. It makes Juggernaut a very strong carry, actually. Because cause Omni Stash used to be the biggest weakness of Juggernaut. Because once you can't kill anyone with the Omni Stash, you basically cannot kill anyone with your Blade Fury or your Brad Clicks. But right now, with the Blade Fury change, it feels like Juggernaut has no downtime in terms of damage. Out the damage department right now. Like, no damage. I mean, it's just so... It's perfect against PL, right? I feel like the itemization of Raven has just been on point. Whereas I'm looking at PL, I mean, in terms of net worth, yes, there's like a 4K difference in terms of, you know, net worth, that is. But itemization, right? He's got heart, he's got hood, Manta, Diffusal. Like, is the order wrong? What happened? As I say that, they've got a nice little hook shot there. DJ, again, on point to the arena, committing onto FBZ. They're going to end up killing him. Keskuf, though, is running for his life. They found Hyde. They got something. The Cog's going to push him back. Hyde goes down as well. That's two for nothing. Drew is kind of fighting. He doppelgangs back, trying to use his illusion to kind of just throw them into a loop, that is. But Drew, I don't know if they want to fully commit for this one. As they go up high ground, I feel like that is a bit of a trap, and they should just back off here. Oh, Drew wants this. He's going in. He gets cogs back. DJ's like, I don't want to fight this guy, but I have my friends that are nearby. Moon, on the other hand, got a nice little Yules. They do find Makoto, and BKB is going to be used on Moon as well. They found Makoto, who's been burning up, but he's got his own BKB, and those right clicks from Moon are starting to do some damage. He's trying to go on the high ground. Keskyu gets the heal, and it looks like the sticky napalm is going to push them all or try to throw them back, but that's pretty much it for now. But Drew, he does have his heart, so he's at back to full. Yeah, PL is trying so hard to re-engage to the fight, trying to, to trying to kill someone, but his team is not ready at all. Like Fnatic is doing a very good job where they keep ignoring the PL, and then they are always going for the backlines to get the easy kills. Because what is PL? How strong how strong can he be without his teammates? So yeah. Fnatic is doing a very good job in terms of team fight um decision making here. Roshan is gonna be the biggest target for both sides. PL is just trying to constantly distract Fnatic from getting to the Roche. This is a really good uh, decision making there from, from Brew. And Boomy Sport, one last smoke, one heal, Mary team fight. Yeah, they and let's see if they can some... make something happen here. But, okay, back to Drew though. Is, it, is his itemization terrible or is it wrong? Like what happened here with PL? Like obviously he's kind of, he, he's this, this, this strong fighter who Fnatic do need to respect at this point, but is it like, are they down 18k because he didn't buy the right items in the right order? Well, honestly, I think I think the defensive blade before Manta completely makes sense because, um, okay, Ooh, well, arena. 
They're gonna look to go. He's by himself, though. FBZ is gonna BKB. He's gonna slither on out of there. They do have Makoto. DJ found him on the high ground. The Cox is not pushing him back because he's got the uh, the BKB. They found Drew. He's gonna buy back. He gets blown up. Raven just doing so much work. <laughs> he actually gets forced out the wrong way. FBZ is looking to fight. He gets the crush, but only onto Raven, and he's by himself. Drew is back into the action. He TP to the outpost. He's looking to go on DJ, who has no mana. They have that, but the egg is gonna be committed, and Drew's gonna back off here. Keskew does need to be careful in terms of the zoning. Moon, they do have the Yules up on him. Makoto, here's the lasso. They're just gonna try to control Raven. That's really not enough time. Drew is burning to the Sunray. He's gonna try to doppelgang. Here come the TPs. Enchantress is on the way. Keskew is here, and uh, just a little baby fairy heals. There's not really a whole lot that's available. Drew does need to be careful. He goes forward into the, the creeps there. He's been chased, and he gets pushed back by the flame break, and Makoto is getting low himself. He gets Yules by Moon here. They have a nice little combo, so it looks like he's going to sacrifice himself to keep the president alive. Drew is alive back in the fountain, but he's definitely going to be writing stories about this and saying what a terrible people, uh, a group of people fanatic is. Well, it feels like it feels like this is not a fight at all the entire game between a uh, fanatic and boom because it's always fanatic fighting and boom just like they're struggling a little bit but they eventually eventually they have to run away. Mm -hmm. I think you're you're asking about the the item order. Honestly, I don't think it, it's gonna make a big difference because the four heroes coming here from boom are just not strong enough to to withstand the team fight coming here from fanatic. And PL just doesn't have... Okay. Oh, they found DJ. They got the nice little hook shot. Mazaras again with a really nice arena. They caught three. Hyde always gets stuck into this. He's got nowhere to go. He gets blown up as well. And DJ is probably going to be the only one. Oh, no. He just barely stays alive. And that, well, that was the victory uh, BKB by Jabs there. As they call GG. And that's going to be the end. 35, 10, 35 minutes. This is kind of what we expected. Fnatic just snowballing and just taking over this game. Yeah, it feels like Mars alone, like Masaros alone represents all the team fight. <laughs> like, represents more team fight than, than Boom already. And Masaros has been making so many, like, he missed a couple of spear here and there, here and there, but he always get the most important kills. So, very good job by Masaros for setting up so many good kills for Juggernaut and, and Lash. And overall, I think this is all, this is just a pretty good, pretty huge outdraft coming out from Fnatic. Boom Esport though, I, I wish to see them going for more synergized draft because they started with Nyx with the same plus Bad Rider, which is a pretty good opening. But then they went with the third pick Enchantress, a post 5 that doesn't give you strong disable, doesn't give you team fight, doesn't give you damage. Yeah. Like overall, I'm just not a fan of Enchantress. I don't know what this hero offers you. And, and if you don't roll over the lane, which in this case they didn't, Enchantress just becomes such a huge liability on, on his team. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I mean, Enchantress, literally the only thing that she really provides to the team is sex appeal at this point. I, I There was really no value add. I, I completely don't know, understand why they did this. I, maybe they were looking to just kind of deal with the Mars. I don't know how that was going to really work. But again, I felt like they needed something more like a clock, a phoenix, you know what I mean? Like any of those heroes that was opposite of that because then you kind of had those AoE stuns, the team fighting, controlling type. Uh, that can really provide a lot. And I think that, you know, you, you talked about what? Undying, Clock, and uh, who was the other position five that you thought was good? Um, okay. Who's that again? Elder Titan, yeah. The Elder like Titan, all, yes. Yeah, all of them comes in with some sort of team fight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, how good would have Elder Titan have been? Like, he arenas you? Okay, I mean, this is pre-BKB, but, you know, you get to stomp in, maybe you slow things down, you give your team a chance. Yeah, it feels like whatever would be better than Enchantress. Like, Enchantress is basically offering nothing in the team fight yeah. except for a frost stuff. Mm -hmm. But imagine a 4K net worth and a 4K Elder Titan. They yes. do completely different things. So, just uh, it's just how much uh, a, a post fight can offer with very little to like very minimum to not to no, to no net worth. The, the difference is just way too, way too big. And I'm not sure why people are like in Southeast Asia. I know that Enchantress is a, is a hero that just completely rough uh rough storm your 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 lane but in southeast asia i think the better way is to go for the team fight which is what fanatic is presenting here agree agree all right so we got game one in the bag let's take a quick little break and then we'll go into game two that should come up in probably about the next five or ten minutes